Hello students, welcome to our read aloud. We've been learning about famous American and famous Virginian Thomas Jefferson. And we've been learning about some of the significant or important things that he did. And one thing he did was buy a large expanse of land from the French called the Louisiana Purchase. And we learned that he sent two explorers to learn about that land. So today we're gonna enjoy Lewis and Clark, a prairie dog for the president. So I think this must be Lewis and Clark, and there's a smiling prairie dog. It says, Lewis and Clark explore the American West. What happens when they meet a prairie dog? Oh, and this is similar to some of the other books we've read like George Washington and the General's Dog and Thomas Jefferson's Feast. So we'll find the same little pictures here and there. And there I see a little prairie dog eating, looks like a piece of apple. And the title page, Lewis and Clark, A Prairie Dog for the President by Shirley Ray Redman, illustrated by John Manders. And there's a close-up, two little portraits of Lewis and Clark. In 1803, Thomas Jefferson was the president of the United States. The country was still new. It was also very big. It was so big, no one had ever explored it all. President Jefferson wondered how long it would take to reach the Pacific Ocean. He wondered what the land was like along the way. The president wrote to his friend, Meriwether Lewis. Lewis was a soldier. He wanted to be an explorer. Lewis's buddy, William Clark, wanted to be an explorer too. Lewis and Clark went to see the president. I need someone to explore the West, said the president. We'll do it, said Lewis and Clark. The president told Lewis and Clark to make maps and explore rivers. He told them to collect plants and draw wild animals. Most important, he told them to send presents. <laughs> Lewis and Clark needed helpers for their journey. They took soldiers, scouts, and boatmen. Lewis even took his dog. Oh, here's his dog. It was a long trip. One of the scouts brought his wife, Sacagawea. Sacagawea was a big help. She picked nuts and berries. She cooked meat and stew. She talked and traded with the Indians they met along the way. Out west, Lewis and Clark made maps. They explored rivers. They collected plants. They saw animals they had never seen before. They saw buffalo. They saw grizzly bears. They saw jackrabbits with long ears. They drew pictures of the animals. So there's a buffalo and a grizzly bear and a jackrabbit with long ears. They tried to catch some of the animals to send to the president, but the buffalo were too big. The grizzly bears were too dangerous. The jackrabbits were too fast. Wow, I'm making a connection to Goldilocks and the three bears. Too big, too dangerous, too fast. The president will think we've forgotten him. They worried. Remember, they're supposed to send a present. One day, Lewis and Clark came to a prairie. The ground was filled with holes. A little animal sat by each hole. What are those? asked Lewis. Just then a hawk flew overhead. The little animals barked. Then they dived into their holes. Let's catch one of those rascals, Clark said. They are small enough to send to the president. The soldiers took shovels and picks. They dug and dug, but the little animals were too fast. Let's flood them out, Lewis said. The men carried water from the river. Lewis poured the water into a hole. Clark and the soldiers waited beside the other holes. Oh, 
I'm feeling bad for the prairie dog. Oh, look, the water's filling up like blah, 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 blah. Oh, no. They waited and waited and waited. Then one of the animals popped up. I've got it, said Clark. Clark put the animal in a cage. I wonder what it is, he said. Lewis laughed. It's a wet rodent. You can call it a ground rat. No, said Clark. It looks like a squirrel. I'll call it a barking squirrel. Squirrels don't bark, said a soldier. Dogs bark. We should call it a prairie dog. That's it. Lewis and Clark agreed. Lewis and Clark picked a scout to take the prairie dog back to the president. Clark also gave the scout some birds to take. They were called magpies. Lewis gave the scout a letter for the president. He gave him plants that he had collected. The soldier gave him buffalo skins and deer horns. Have a nice trip, said Lewis and Clark. Wow, he really looks weighted down with all the things he's supposed to take back east, right? Most of the time we talk about exploration moving west, but he's going back to take those things to the president. Oh, there's some little black magpies. I'm making a connection to Thomas Jefferson's feast. Are you? The scout and the animals rode a barge down the river. Remember, a barge is a big flat boat. They boarded a big ship in New Orleans. <clears throat> the ship sailed around Florida, then it sailed north to Baltimore, Maryland. Finally, the ship landed in Baltimore. The scout put the animals and the other presents in the back of a wagon. He paid the driver to take everything to President Jefferson in Washington, D.C. So you can see the path. They had to go down the river to the mouth of the big Mississippi River, and then they had to take a boat around Florida up to Baltimore, which is a big city north of where we live, <clears throat> and then they had to travel by wagon to Washington, D.C. The president met the wagon at the White House. He picked up the prairie dog's cage. Is it a gopher? He asked. No, said the driver. I think it is a woodchuck. <laughs> president Jefferson read the letter from Lewis. A soldier named this creature a prairie dog. It lives on the western prairie and barks like a dog. The president gave the prairie dog a piece of apple. Chomp! The prairie dog gobbled it right up. The president laughed. Americans will want to see this little fellow, he said. I will send these fine presents to Mr. Peel's museum. <clears throat> Mr. Peel's museum was in Philadelphia. The prairie dog and the other gifts rode in a stagecoach to the museum. It was a very bumpy ride. Mr. Peel loved the presents. He sent President Jefferson a thank you note. The prairie dog is a pleasing little animal. He is not at all dangerous like a groundhog, he wrote. Mr. Peel put the cage in a sunny room. Children came to see the prairie dog. Artists came to draw its picture. The visitors touched the buffalo skins and the deer horns. They stared at the magpies. The American West must be a wonderful place, they said. Mm, there's a sparkly word, wonderful. The West was wonderful. Lewis and Clark were gone for two years exploring it. In November of 1805, they finally reached the Pacific Ocean. They were heroes. And maybe Sacagawea too, huh? We couldn't have done it without her. We're gonna learn a little more about her. If you travel west today, you can still see some of the sights Lewis and Clark saw. You can see grizzly bears and buffalo. You can see jackrabbits and magpies. And if you are lucky, you might even see a prairie dog. Oh, and as always, there's some interesting facts in the back here. There's Meriwether Lewis and William Clark. Those are the real, real painted portraits of them. This is a true story, and Lewis and Clark were real, real explorers. Mr. Peel was also an artist. He painted these pictures of Lewis and Clark and put them in his museum. Today, the museum is called Independence Hall. And I'm making a connection with the magpie. Remember in Thomas Jefferson's Feast, how Thomas Jefferson had a little 
like a pet magpie everywhere in his study and in all the pictures of the book. So I hope you enjoyed learning more about Lewis and Clark. Don't forget to keep washing your hands, cover your coughs and sneezes, do some reading, do some writing, help your family around the house, and I'll see you tomorrow. Bye.